you want to do a good job in providing the latest technology and tools and models for leadership development. That includes not only leaders in the organization, but it actually includes everyone in the organization. And it also includes the teams, because teams are nowadays, and especially for creating our future, teams are the most important entities, systems, that will create change and that will create shift in the co collective consciousness. <clears throat> when we change the collective consciousness, um, I believe, and that's what I have been seeing in my environment, when we see the change in the collective consciousness, people actually become more aware how they can contribute. Because we are all born with reasons to this world. And the more we are finding out about our values, finding out who we are becoming, we are becoming more connected to our essence reason for being here. And the main goal that I'm looking for <clears throat> in, in serving the organizations, the individual executives, and also the people in different circles, one of the main goals that I have is to create safe and secure platforms so that they can really be able to look into themselves, be vulnerable, be courageous, be playful, be present to their heart's desires and to their heart's yearnings to become who they need to become. So in creating those safe platforms and in giving them some tools, some models, in training them with those tools and models and approaches, it allows them to connect with their essence. It allows them to dream what they want in their life and in the world. So they move towards that. So in basic terms, what my desire and what I'm working for in my company is awakening people and inspiring them for creating evolution, for sponsoring evolution, for collective consciousness. We always, I mean lately especially, we are hearing that um, we are one. Everything is connected, everybody is connected. So that became very obvious, especially with social media, <laughs> with everything happening in the network, with the de developments in the technology. It actually became very easy to see how we are really connected. But that is the connection that is created through technology. If you look at earlier uh, connections, if you look at what's underneath that structure, definitely we are connected. Definitely we are connected not only with the human species, but we're connected with the whole universe. We're connected with all the other beings. So it's important for us to know that there are systems and there are relationships in systems. That's the basic definition of a system. They get together, different entities get together. They have a common agenda, they have a common goal and they are related to one another. They actually are dependent on one another. This happens in nature. There are, this happens in cycles, in seasons. This happens in family systems. This happens in friendship, in school, in classes. Systems are present everywhere. What we are doing with the organization and systems, relationship systems coaching programs, we give tools and we help them to create a language so that they can be able to name the system that they're a part of. So language is a very important thing. We have our thoughts which are expressed through our language and which influences our behaviors, our actions. So if we develop the correct language that really represents our thoughts, then we can act in alignment with our thoughts. So what we're doing in these courses is to help people to develop an understanding, the belief system, the thought system that really allows them to become systems thinkers, to look at and be able to see the relationships in the systems. And when they have that thought developed, then we're giving them the language and then they will of course be leading into the actions 
to bring forward all their beliefs and their values. There's a lot of research uh, that shows us when people get together, they always create something. So what happens with these tools when people learn them, they go back to their organizations and be able to create more conscious relationships. What we mean by that is instead of becoming like a leaf going around with the wind, they are becoming the directors of a wind. They are becoming the partners and the dancers in the wind of change. What we see in organizations today, when there is the wind of change, and wind of change is throwing everyone outside of their direction, of their route, if people are not conscious what they're doing, then they actually lose a lot of things. But if they're conscious, then they can learn how to dance and how to fly in those winds of change. That's the tools we're giving them. It's how to be with the change, how to influence the change for the good of the company, for the good of the people. You're using a very important word, which is dialogue. So we are human beings. We are very, very complex creatures. We are definitely very complex. And it's important, as I said, when two people get together, what are we going to create? In order to design that, we need to be open for dialogue. If there is no dialogue, if people are not listening to one another, if some of the voices in the system are not being heard, then actually it's a very irrespectful and unfair attitude towards life. Life happens, life happens in many different voices, in many different forms. Life doesn't happen only, or life doesn't happen only for a dominant voice or for a high volume. Life is happening for all of us. By listening to different voices in systems, we are honoring life. We are honoring all the different perspectives and different aspects of life. Coming to what's happening back home, it's again about life, of course. It looks like it has started with a tree or the park, which is a beautiful excuse for awakening. It's about being awake for your potential as a human being. And as you're awake for your potential as a human being, it's also staying connected to all the other beings around you. So when governments, when business people set goals and agendas that only thinks about themselves and their own individual agenda, they forget about the collective. They forget about the society that they're living in. They're not creating together with the society that they're living in. So it's very important for the governments and also for the businesses to have an awareness of what do these people want? What's their needs? What their dreams are? How can we co-create? How can we create together so that we can move together? We can have alignment together. We can have alignment towards the same vision and actually that in, in Turkish, we have a saying from unity, you have power. And that's what was lacking. This whole event that's happening in Turkey has shown us once again, unity is power. I feel very sad when I see people sleeping. And we all go through those stages. Sometimes we sleep. <laughs> Important thing is to notice that we are sleeping. And this event actually showed us that we have been sleeping. And at a different level, we have not been sleeping. We were just waiting for the right time, for the right place to offer ourselves 
as partners in the communication, as partners in the dialogue. Um, I think one of the main reasons for not being awake is a concept of domestication. So when we are growing up, in order to be part of the family, in order to be part of the class at school, in order to be loved, to be valued, we start giving up our authenticity. So when we give up our authenticity, we become copies. Once I have seen a graffiti which I loved, it said, we are born original and we die as copies. So that really hurts me. That really I mean, breaks my heart because yes, we are born as original people, very authentic. We all have incredible value and incredible potential to contribute to our awakening and to our consciousness. But because of the domestication that happens in the families, at school systems, in the society, we give up our original being, our original essential selves and become like copies of other people. Yeah, so that is, that is what puts us asleep. Once we give up our authenticity away, we become like others. We become like average, we become like normal. And we lose our authenticity. When we are inspired, when we start awakening, we are going back to our original story the original reason of why we're here. So I say domestication being the main thing for being asleep. That, this is a question that I will probably answer by saying it depends. <laughs> Companies have their dreams and companies have their values. We cannot impose companies' values. We cannot say every company must have diversity as their value. It may not be realistic. There may be certain industries, there may be certain departments where diversity may not be a value. So it's really about what the team, what the department, what the company is wanting to achieve. For certain industries, for certain goals, diversity is an important value. Then in that case, of course, they need to learn more how to listen, how to respect, and how to live side by side. Without giving away your own authentic self, how can I accept the authenticity of the person next to me and still hold my authenticity? So this is really going towards a new um, understanding of relationships. It's not me or the other person. It's not either or. Is it me who is right? Is it that person who is right? There is always that separation that happens in the world. The new story that we all need to create is unity. In the business world as well, there is separation and there's a lot of blaming that happens like they did it it's their fault it's like they there are all these toxic blaming communication that happens that eventually separates people what we need to learn and i'm saying me as well because all the time we are learning new things what we all need to learn is how can we really hold unity how can we hold both truths as the truth at the same time without needing to choose, without needing to kill one of them, but still holding both of them as a truth. One of the main, when I look at the companies that are being successful and moving towards what they really want to move for, one of the main qualities they have is they remember that we are human beings. So when we remember our humanness, we will be able to accept one another and then create with that. I see a lot of places where when people are not in alignment 
with their dreams and not in alignment with the values they have, their performance goes down. And I see this in many places. It's not dependent on the culture. It's really about, am I in alignment with this dream? Am I in alignment with these values? If people are not in alignment with the dream and with the values, then it's really very difficult to expect any motivation, any power, any productivity, any sustainability. So you cannot do or perform in a system where you don't believe in those values and the beliefs. So this is something in general that, that I see beyond the cultures, beyond the cultural norms, beyond it being Middle East, Europe, America, South Africa. If people are not believing in the dream and the values, they cannot perform. So that becomes their weakness. The same thing is their strength. If they believe, if they're aligned with their values, and if they know how to create relationship with their humanness as a human being, with another human being, then that becomes their strength. That's a beautiful question. Um, I think our time for picking heroes as leaders is over because I believe that everybody is a leader. We don't need to look up for somebody else for leadership. If we all look into ourselves, if you all look into what's my dream, what's my values, what is something that really excites me, what is it that I want to contribute to this world, to the system that I'm living in, and if I can get together with some other people, it's actually a more collective leadership rather than choosing individuals as the hero and expecting everything from the hero or doing and obeying to what the hero wants. Leadership models are changing. My belief is since we all are leaders of this life, if we all live from the potential, if we all live in alignment with our potential, then we can live together in a more effective way. Well, there's always, uh, I, I always see these trainings as a door. It's not, oh, I'm going to get there and I'm going to get the tools for my work. It's not only that. We come for excuses like this. I need to be a better leader. I need to be a better manager. I need to be a better coach, a better father, a better business partner. So there's always that door that we walk in. And that actually opens a different world. So they are going to get a lot of skills to create more consciousness in their relationships. That's what my, my dream is. Not only open the door that they came in for, but my dream is when they learn something about their business, a skill, a tool that they can learn in their business, they can actually use that skill for their families. They can use that skill for the society. They can use that skill for their friends, for their parents. So it's not only putting things into a compartment like this is an organizational skill. Beyond that, they are remembering how to become human beings. They're remembering how to become human beings by creating conscious and intentional relationships.